Hi, tech enthusiasts! Welcome back to Fast Cabling. On our previous video, we compare wire and wireless camera and help you choose the best network camera for your needs. If you missed it, make sure to check it out. But today, we're focusing on those of you leaning toward wireless options. Are wireless cameras worth trying? So let's dive in. And before you invest in wireless cameras, it is crucial to assess your network. You should start by testing your Wi-Fi signal strength and network speed. Now you can use website like Open Speed Test to get accurate readings. Simply just type in the website and walk around your home or office and monitor the signal strength. Ideally, you want strong signal where you want to place your cameras. And by using speed test, you can measure your internet speed, and this helps ensure your network can handle the camera feeds. While wireless cameras offer flexibilities, they do come with some disadvantages. Now, Wi-Fi performance can be easily affected by various factors like walls, interference from other devices, and even weather conditions. Now, when you encounter weak signals, one solution could be mesh Wi-Fi. Now, mesh Wi-Fi system consists of multiple nodes spread throughout your home, creating a seamless network and each knot communicates with the others to provide a strong signal everywhere. However, each knot in mesh Wi-Fi setup reduces the available bandwidth by approximately 50%. So while you get better coverage, you may experience slower speeds. Now let's talk about camera bandwidth requirement. For smooth video streaming, each camera generally needs at least 2 megabit per second for standard definition and up to 5 megabit per second for high definition. So ensure your network can handle this, especially if you have multiple cameras. And remember, higher image quality can mean higher bandwidth use and potentially leading to trade-off in smoothness. So you should be prepared to adjust your settings to find a balance. Now move on to environments. Indoor environments usually have fewer obstacles, making the Wi-Fi coverage more reliable. However, at outdoor, obstacles like walls, trees can significantly reduce the Wi-Fi speed and reliability. So you should always test your signal in the exact spot that you plan to install your outdoor wireless camera to ensure the signal is strong enough. And another key consideration is power. Now, wireless cameras still need a power source, so you can choose between battery power or plug-in option. Now, battery power cameras offer more flexibility, allows you to install anywhere, but it needs frequent recharging. While plug-in camera provide consistent power, but limit placement options. So after we talk about everything about wireless cameras and you found them don't meet your expectations, no worry. There are alternatives like using wire power over Ethernet cameras or you can use wireless bridges for cameras. Now our wireless bridge can extend your network wirelessly to where you want to place a camera. Essentially, you use a pair of wireless network bridge to create a point-to-point -point connection. So now we're in front of the demonstration board and looking at our wireless bridge deployment. Now, we all know the wireless cameras have limited distance range, but by using our wireless bridges, now you can extend your wireless transmission up to 3 kilometers. And here's how it's set it up. First, let's take a look at this wireless bridge. It's mounted way up high. Make sure you mount it high to avoid the obstacles. And make sure the bridges are facing each other in a clear line of sight. So this one we have right here. And we have another one all the way across the room. And they're facing directly with each other. So let's take a closer look at our bridge. 
You can see we have the M and S mode. On this side, we are going to tilt it to the M mode. It is already powered up using a 12 volt DC power. And this is the ethernet cable connected to a router. Now this is a reset button. We're going to use this to configure the number on the back. Now on the back, we have the channel number. Make sure two bridges are on the same channel. We are on channel one now, remember this number. And here we have all the indicated lights so you know the status of our wireless transmission. Now here is connected all the way to our router. The router is connected to our network video recorder and displaying video footage already. And let's come over to the other side of the room. Now there are a clear line of sight. And on this side, the wireless bridge is also powered up and connected to our bullet camera using an ethernet cable. Again, this is on the S mode. Make sure they're not the same. Now let's look at the back. As you can see, we're on channel one as well. Make sure the channel number are the same. So it's pretty simple. You don't need all the complicated configuration on your web and it is connected to our bullet camera. So now you can see a live video, not only on a big screen monitor, but also on our mobile device. So this setup gives you the wireless flexibility for placement, but with the reliability of a wire connection. So it's an excellent compromise if you need stable, high quality video feeds without running long cables. So there you have it. Wireless cameras can be a great addition to your surveillance system, but it's important to understand their limitations and alternatives. Whether you choose wireless, wire, or a hybrid solution, make sure it fits your specific need. And if you need more personal advice, we are offering a free tech consultation to help you choose the perfect setup. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more tech insights. And thank you very much for joining us. I'll see you next time on Fast Cabling.